I've been coming to Arthrex uh, probably since I think 2003. And um, I practiced, uh, when I originally came out, I practiced in, a, in an urban level one trauma center and I saw much the same cases that were just presented to you. And the evolution of my thought uh, came along uh, and it's, it's interesting how you, you listen to all the different perspectives because it's really the evolution of thought is the same. It's, we all start questioning uh, the previous generation's conclusions and this is the place where I worked. I'm convinced that a lot of the old experience, uh, say for example, uh, with the MCL, um, the previous generation was, was burned in, in repairing the MCL for one reason alone, is because they put the patient in a cast for two months after they did the surgery. And everybody knows if you, put a, if you cast someone for a long period of time, it's, it's kind of like imagining uh, do a total knee uh, and then put them in a cast at 20 degrees for uh, two months and then tell me how they're going to do. It's, so it's really uh, moving the patients. And it's all these little things. And I, got, I really have to thank Reinhold and Arthrex for continually innovating and coming up with uh, new ways of doing it that minimize things and, uh, and allow us to really kind of evolve our surgical thought. So uh, I started off with, and I learned a lot of things about multi-ligs, and one was that you need to get to them quickly or else uh, things that are neglected like this will turn into that. And uh, this is kind of, this was one of the uh, pictures from way back when, when I was doing multi-legs in the early 2000s. And there's hardware everywhere. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but really kind of the thought was to reconstruct everything early. We talk a lot about failure, but we don't talk a lot about the morbidity of the procedure. And anyone who does a lot of multi-legs knows that uh, you're gonna get stiffness, you're gonna get, recurrent PCL sag, you're going to have to go back and reoperate to do lysis of adhesions. And these are the things that make people avoid uh, uh, these multi-legs. And so I went from this and then um, uh, my, my techniques evolved as, as the retro cutter came through and things came, and I could minimize the uh, surgical insult. And this is a, uh, the one, I think one of the first all inside multi-legs that was presented. And then it started to evolve to try and minimize the surgery even more. And when I would see this type of uh, dislocation with, with ACLs and PCLs that were literally popped right off the bone, I started trying to repair them like I talked about in the, in the ACL repair talk. And so the benefits of repair in the multi-lig are in what I use as a ligament preservation approach. I explained to my patients uh, essentially Look, I'm going to go in and try and repair what I can. If I can't repair it, I'm going to try and repair as much as I can and add a graft to it to keep the biology. And if I can't, then I'm going to use reconstruction as a last resort. So it's a stepwise approach. I call it ligament preservation. I think early intervention in these things is tremendously important and the literature bears that out. A repair, or this preservation approach uh, decreases the morbidity, decreases the stiffness. And the internal brace technology has really led to, you know, a lot of windows opening in this, in this old haunted house of the multi-ligament knee. It maintains the natural biology, proprioception, and anatomy, and it doesn't burn bridges. If you have a repair, I call it damage control orthopedics. If you have one of these horrifically injured knees, sometimes you can sneak in there, tack a few things back into place. You can always come back to fight another day. And some, a lot of times you'll find out that everything heals up anyways, you don't even have to come back. So my question is always, should we be looking for home runs in the treatment of these horrific injuries? Or should we be just trying to get base hits? Should we just trying to make things better? And in a stepwise fashion, do we all have to do it? Do we have to do it all right at the first go around? So this is one of my first papers. I actually started with my repair uh, evolution and uh, journey. I re actually started repairing the PCL, and I'll give the credit to Dr. Uh, Warren at HSS, who used to, who taught me when I was a resident that sometimes the PCL pops right off the bone, and he would put some stitches in it and just pull it back. Well, as the rotator cuff uh, technology and the anchors and the stitchers came out, and they started getting better and better. I would go into these knees and I started to stitch the PCL back first. And this is the first paper I ever published uh, talking about PCL repairs. So if I had a repair like this with a proximal tear off the bone on, on the sagittals and the coronals, 
This is what it looks like. It's They're always kind of sagged back because as the tibia sags posteriorly, it drags that proximally torn PCL with it. And then you have to reduce the, piece, the tibia to see if the PCL is going to reach. And here you can see me with my grasper pulling the PCL up. A lot of times people will go in, grab it, pull, and say it's not going to make it. It's because you're not reducing the tibial sag. And it gives you this kind of erroneous thought that the PCL won't reach. Put some stitches in it. And this is real, this is old stuff. Some of you have been around for a while. We might recognize, this is the, uh, the retro cutter drill. That was the only cannulated drill way back when. And so we put that in and, uh, and tie that PCL up nicely. Well, this is six year post-op MRI. You can see it's healed up nicely. Well, eventually that evolved to PCL with internal brace. And that's a little trickier. And as you do more of these, uh, you, you have to get to the back of the knee like was shown. Uh, that posterior medial portal is incredibly helpful. And uh, this one is very similar. Here I am reducing it. This is the opposite leg, so it's, everything's reversed. We're reducing it to see if it will reach. And uh, we've got the stitches in it. We're pulling it up. And again, we've got, uh, at this point, I'm using suture anchors. And you can see that top anchor. I've got the, the uh, tiger tape in there. And now I'm gonna, I've drilled a hole up through my tibia and I've got a passing suture and I'm gonna pull that tiger tape down along the back of the PCL and through the tibia, just, just like I would pull the ACL repair along the front of the ACL. Now this is looking at it from a front, uh, internally braced ACL and PCL primary repairs. And this is looking at it from the back. You're looking from a posterior medial portal and you can see that tiger tape and, the, and the, the body of the PCL and the tiger tapes running along the posterior aspect of the PCL there and then down through the tibia to reinforce it. Sometimes you have uh, uh, PCL avulsion fractures. You can treat these just like McKeever fractures for the ACL. It's a little trickier. You have to take down a posterior veil of tissue behind the PCL, but you can uh, get in on these, pull them down, tie them over a button. Sometimes I'll even I'll put a button on the inside too. I'll put my fiber tape over the fracture fragment if it's comminuted and I'll pull that down through the tibia and then put it over another button down distally. That's my current technique. Talking about MCL, which we just uh, had a nice talk about, I think you really have to divide MCLs between superficial and deep MCL injuries and then the whole medial side of the knee. And I'm gonna show you a nice case here where uh, the entire medial side of the knee was gone and each of the individual components of the uh, medial side of the knee were easily dissected out. Here you can see we have a proximal tear, but this patient's was much, uh, this, this is actually just a, stan a standard MCL. And you can see right here, we're, the, uh, we're off at the femur. These are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see this is a, a medial approach. You can see that MCL sticking up at you. We're gonna put some stitches in it and uh, use the swivel lock there. Uh, anchor it down and then run our uh, internal brace dis distally. I can, you can do a percutaneous approach here because it's not a tremendously involved MCL and anchor it down distally. You can also do this for the LCL. Um, and here's an LCL that's popped right off the fibula. Uh, we're gonna make a lateral exposure. Uh, we're gonna do a uh, drill our oblique tunnel entering uh, anterolaterally and out posterior immediately. And I like to run that, uh, that fiber tape through that tunnel bring it up and anchor it at the epicondyle uh, to reinforce things. I've also got another technique. Sometimes that the, the top of the fibular head is a little comminuted. You don't have great bone. You can't get good fixation. So stick this one in your pocket. Uh, you can take, you can do an oblique drill through the fibula and exit down on the neck of the fibula there. And you can, you can drop a button in there and get a, a, a far cortical bite. Uh, and that's a great technique to, to allow you to pull down soft tissue to a little uh, compromised proximal fibular bone. I forgot to include the picture with the buttons in there, but the button would be sitting on there just like you'd, do, uh, you'd use anywhere. And that's the fi finally the fiber tape uh, being brought up independently uh, and, and tacked up at the epicondyle to reinforce the construct. You put it all together. Uh, ACL, PCL, MCL, and this is that case I was talking about. Have a, have a look at this one. There's it's great anatomy on the medial side of the knee. Let's see if we can get it to you play here. He's got grade three va valgus wide open. The entire medial side of his knee is ripped open. And as is typical with these things, you can so this see this is an ACL, PCL, MCL. Laxity. 
Okay, so you can Look see at the anatomy here. put in a single four or five full fed corkscrew to bring up the whole poster remedial capsule. And now things look a lot more orderly. We still have this portion of our superficial MCL. We can also see over here, we got the MPFL. That's gonna come over the top here. And we've got a little bit of the menisco femoral that we're gonna tack underneath there. And it's all gonna come together real nicely, as you can see, and close the whole medial side of the knee. Now we can go in and scope the knee and our fluid will actually stay in the knee. So sometimes you just got to get in there. This is these are the, the repaired cruciates, ACL Great and PCL. This is five days post-op. Nice raise, raise, just a little bit of lag to be expected with such a big surgery. Now go ahead and bend it for me as best you can. And you haven't been to any therapy yet, have you? No, not yet. So we've already got 90 degrees range of motion and we've got good active quad because we didn't beat him up too much with the surgery. See here, we've already got 90 degrees range of motion and we haven't really done any therapy yet. Okay, he was off pain meds in three days. We can see here that we just have a slight jog to posterior drawer, which is fine because most, most posterior cruciate ligament reconstructions end up with a slight uh, jog. And then anteriorly, we've got no movement we, where we brace the ACL. We can see here nicely that the Lachman exam is completely negative. And if you come over to here, we're going to look at the valgus exam and show that it's not moving at all, the valgus. That patient's five days post-op from a triple ligament surgery and is not on any pain medicine whatsoever. At some point, we have to think about the injury that we're causing to the patient and how much pain meds and how much stiffness. And we have to find the right spot to where, where um, repair can fit into our algorithm. We can't just go in and reconstruct everybody. It is not necessary. We can use a preservation first approach and we just have to refine our techniques and, uh, and we'll see the benefits of these procedures. So in my practice, in my study group, we looked at uh, the multiple ligament injured knee and we looked back uh, in a retrospective study from 2009 to 18 and uh, we tried to figure out how many times we were able to repair the ligaments. So we had 48 patients, average age 32, 54% male, and we looked at the demographics, the injury patterns, treatment, and short-term outcomes. What we found was that 46% of, of, of the injuries were KD1s, including one cruciate and, uh, one, cruciate and one of the collaterals. And then 54% of them were KD3s, 40% uh, were medials, and 14% were laterals. And what we found was pretty interesting. 53% of uh, the ACLs that were torn had proximal tears. So that's a little more common than in the uh, isolated ACL tears. For PCLs, about 47% proximal, but also 11% distal. MCLs, 55 were proximal, 39% distal. And LCLs, 53% were distal. Most of them were distal when we could get them. We found that uh, we were able to repair 55% uh, of all the ACLs that we encountered, 73% of the PCLs, 88% of the MCLs, and 87% of the LCLs. We've, when we looked at multivariate analysis, we found that uh, age over 35 was predictive of whether we could uh, repair those ligaments. And again, so it's that older age group that tends to pull the ligaments off the bone. Personally, I believe it's a vascular issue. Just like the rotator cuff tears right at the bone because of watershed areas, I think it ha the same thing happens to the ACL. Um, and then uh, BMI, the, the lower BMIs uh, tended to be a little more frequent. Incidence and repairability. So of the ACLs, 98% were torn. And when we looked at all the multi-legs, they always had an ACL involved. 55% were repaired and only two out of 23 of those failed. Both of them were distal. PCLs, 56% torn, 73% repair, uh, three out of 18 loosened up on us. And uh, MCL, 69% torn, 88% repaired, none of them loosened up. And LCL, 31% torn, 87% repaired, and 18% uh, loosened up. Of the 43 patient, 90% were eligible for a repair of at least one ligament. Again, I'd like to thank my uh, research team for helping uh, to publish and analyze all of this data. And uh, I do believe that uh, a ligament preservation approach is appropriate in these severe injuries. Thanks for your attention.